When an applicant completes our process, we provide the landlord what's called a financial resume or a bank check. We've created a technology that takes the standard information that we receive from that bank connection being created, and we analyze it to organize it in a way that's readable to the landlord. Welcome to the Property Management Brainstorm Show with Bob Preston. Bob is the CEO, owner, and broker of North County Property Group, the fastest growing and top ranked property management company in San Diego County, California. This podcast is for property managers and real estate investors who want to stay on top of leading trends in managing their property assets. You'll hear from leading professionals on the best practices for growing your property management business, successfully renting your properties, and how to make sure your properties are managed correctly. Now, here is your host, Bob Preston. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Property Management Brainstorm Show. Thanks for coming in. This is Bob Preston, your host, broadcasting from the North County Property Group studio in Del Mar, California. If you're new here, please subscribe so you get access to all of our ongoing episodes and tips and tricks. And if you like what you hear, please pay it forward with a positive review. As a property manager or landlord, Do you ever wonder that you are not truly getting the full financial picture when you're screening your tenant applicants? Sometimes we get applications that are kind of smoke and mirrors, you know, and we can typically ferret those out and filter them so that, you know, we know who's trying to pull the wool over our eyes. But other times the application may look great, good and complete on the surface. But in reality, some of the aspects that would be helpful in making a decision just aren't visible, or maybe you're not getting the full picture. Wouldn't it be cool if you could verify renter's income, payroll, past rent payments, non-sufficient fund overdrafts, all in one easy to pull screening report? Well, I've got on the show today with me as a guest, Craig Schoen, CTO and a co-founder at Rentify. And Rentify is a company dedicated to helping us as property managers and landlords to utilize a new open banking technology approach to get that full picture of a tenant's financial resume, as they call it, during the screening process. Craig, hey, welcome to the show today. Glad to be here. Great to have you too. And I always like my guests to kick us off by just giving us an introduction of yourself a quick maybe elevator pitch for Renify and bring us up to speed on what you're all about. Oh, thank you. My name is Craig Schoen. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Rentify. And what we do is we use open banking technology that allows landlords to uh, provide a rental application to applicants that analyzes the full cash flow of that applicant. So understanding from a bank level detail where their payroll is coming from, if they've paid past rent, and a lot of the other financial details that just aren't readily available in a credit check or in other services. We find that landlords that adopt a bank check through Rentify uh, are able to attract great tenants and they're able to really understand a lot more about the tenants before they sign the lease, which is a win-win for everybody. You started the description by using the term open bank technology. We have a company we work with that offers no security deposit options. You may know who they are. I won't mention them by name. Tell us a bit, little bit more about open banking technology, how long that's been around and how you guys are tapping into that for your platform. You know, open banking technology really started to become something after the 08 crash. And what happened was banks started realizing that they need a way to tap in, especially if they're not a customer of that bank, they need an easy way to tap in to person that's looking for a loan. Their essentially a digital version of their paper bank statement. And it started to grow and and it became essentially the backbone of what people call the fintech industry. There's really not a ton being done for landlords to adapt this technology. And if you look at it, you realize that, you know, when the credit check was created and landlords started using it, the credit check was never built for landlords. It was built for the lending industry. So open banking, actually, if you, you know, we we started to look at the data and understand how, you know, it would would work for a landlord. And we realized, hey, if you can offer a turnkey solution, no technical background where a landlord could sign up and provide a rental application all in the same hour. And that rental application allowed them to do all the pre-screening 
and a bank check and provide one report that validated the pre-screening questions using the applicant's bank information. So when people say they make $4,000 a month, our bank check automatically verifies that, oh, it's actually only $3,000. Landlords get all these documents, pay stubs, um, you know, reference letters, employment reference letters, you know, government documents. And ultimately it all ends up showing up in the applicant's bank statements. And we use that technology to provide landlords that service. If we're lucky, we get all those documents, right? I mean, it's a huge challenge for people like my company, North County Property Group. We have to take in an application. We open the application. We look if all the questions are answered, first of all, sometimes they don't even answer all the questions. And then if it's not complete, then we have to reach out to that tenant and say, read the instructions, give us all these documents. And sometimes that can take days. Uh, In this rental market, sometimes that means right out of the gate that the tenant and their application are going to be denied because their application is not complete. And we have 10 applicants and one but one person gave it to us all in one shot, right? But that might not necessarily mean that person's the right applicant or the best, right? It could be that somebody just forgot to attach their pay stub. So you guys streamline that. You call that report, we get the financial resume. So tell us about that and what that report would show. When an applicant completes our process, we provide the landlord what's called a financial resume or a bank check. We've created a technology that takes the standard information that we receive from that bank connection being created, and we analyze it to organize it in a way that's readable to the landlord. And we recategorize a lot of the transactions so a landlord can see, okay, these are all the payroll transactions for the past year. These are all their rent payments coming out of their account in the past up to two years. They pay their credit cards on time. We provide any payday loan activity, government income, so any type of social assistance, all of that, state, federal, it's all covered. And we categorize the whole thing. So it's a simple one page that a landlord can basically see the entire financial picture of the applicant. What you're really renting to is their bank account. Because as long as the money's coming in, they're, they're, they're obviously behaving themselves. Everything's good. But if you don't understand the bank account, you really don't understand from a cash flow perspective, can this person pay you on a month-to-month basis? One page, most landlords, it takes them two minutes to read and they have everything they need to know if they want to proceed or not with an applicant. You mentioned the financial crisis and all that kind of thing. Back in the day, before 2008, there was a thing called stated income loans where you could sort of just turn over your bank statements. And I can't help it, but feel like this is kind of a fancy or maybe higher tech way of doing sort of stated income analysis. Is it comparable? Of course. Okay. A hundred percent. I, you know, it, It's actually really interesting you mentioned that. So some of our customers actually said, yeah, you know, back in the nineties, what we used to do is they were in a small town and they would call the bank. So they would actually just call the bank and say, oh, is this person have, you know, like they, they knew who they banked with. And just, they said, they asked the person, can we call just to verify with the bank that you make what you make? And they would ask a couple questions and they would have someone at the bank they would usually call and they would get all the answers they need because they, they wanted to talk to the bank. They didn't want someone to print out a statement, just like you don't want to take a printed statement today because printed statements can be altered and you want to get the information directly from the bank so you know it's 100% accurate. And I was like, well, why'd you stop doing it in the 90s? They're like, oh, the, the person left. So we just didn't have anybody to talk to. And now we can basically make an easy process for every landlord to get that, that type of service. What about landlord verifications? I mean, maybe you know they paid their rent on time. You don't really know how they treated the property. We, we don't know to the detail how they treated the property. But one of the things that as we've added more applicants, what we're seeing is that there's profiles and patterns in the way that the accounts and the spending, the the credits and the debits and the types of transactions. We start to see patterns where it will be possible in the future as we add more applicants where we'll be able to give a pretty good probability score on pride of ownership. Do a credit check at all in your process? And if not, do you recommend that your clients still do that? We provide um, the option to, to do a credit check. Um, but only after a bank check is done. And the reason is, is because the bank also provides the full identity and address of the applicant that they have. So what you get is all of the KYC, know your customer, that the technology that the bank uses. So when they provide the identity through the bank check, then you can auto-populate that if a credit check is also requested. 
and you reduce your error rate on actually running those credit checks because you get, as you know, if you don't get the address right and other variables, sometimes you get back errors that, that people can't complete. Landlords like that we have credit checks because it's what they know. But once they do a couple bank checks, they realize they can still do it if they feel comfortable. But for the most part, they just stick with the bank check. It's less expensive than a credit check and they get the information that they're actually looking for. I completely agree, and I'm, and I'm with you on that. It's interesting, though, because as a property manager, we're in the position where we also have to answer to a property owner. Of course. And the very first question they usually ask when we're recommending that we move forward with a tenant is, okay, what's their credit score? Of course. <laughs> and so I'm envisioning, we don't use your technology yet. I'm going to check it out, though. This has, been, this has been great so far. But I do know a little bit about open banking because we do the no security deposit option. We get questions about that too. Well, how do you do that? How does that work, right? And then of course we have to explain it. I think over the course of time, people will get more used to that, but it is going to be something we have to get through. So I guess we could always run the credit report though. I mean, there's nothing that says we couldn't still do that. Of course, absolutely. And then you've got both pieces of data and we could also get the uh, landlord verification, landlord reference checks, right? We could still do those things. But in addition to all that, we have your cool financial report. What ends up happening for landlords is they use it to ask questions. So for example, let's just say you still talk to their previous landlord or the, where they're currently living and they say, oh yeah, they paid, they, the landlord says they paid, but really the landlord's just trying to get them out because they don't pay, mm -hmm. right? So those situations can happen. So when you do a bank check, you say, okay, landlord said they were great but I don't see any rent payments. So it's a red flag. And you can ask them, I don't see you paying rent. Depending on what they say, it kind of creates this really simple feedback loop. You know, just ask the simple questions and, and have the data to know if someone's telling you the truth or not. I'm just curious because, you know, if I were an applicant, I've got a bank account that I share with my wife. Not much money is in it, but there's a small savings account too that earns almost no interest. We've got, you know, investment accounts with Fidelity. Yep. We've each got a couple of IRAs. I've, I've got two or three credit cards. Right? Yep. How much data does the applicant have to give you for you to do a proper and full analysis? They just provide us their primary institution. So it could be Wells Fargo, Bank of America. And we receive all the accounts inside of that. And that will then show us in, in that primary account where the money comes in. And then the money going out, paying rent and all that other stuff. If you determine that the main account they're running their money in and out of is their, say, checking account, and you can see that there are deposits coming in from some some unidentified account, or maybe it is identified, at least it would provide the landlord with the ability to ask a question like, hey, what's this Fidelity account that we don't have exposure to? You know, What is that? Where's that money coming from, right? 100%. We actually provide... A, one of the pieces of information we provide is income, including transfers. So we actually break out and show, okay, well, this is income, including what we consider through our analysis to be transfers. So cyclical going from a checking to a savings, a savings to a checking, an account that is under the same ownership of, of the applicant. So, uh, cause sometimes, you know, if someone just showed you, oh, well, oh my, the credits in my account, you know, every bank, they give information, credits and debits, you know, looks really big, but a lot of those that money is just coming from a savings account to a checking. That's not, we show it as income, but we have a specific number that's income with transfers. And we don't show that number if it's just a uh, true income or payroll income. So we give a lot of granularity that a landlord can go into to really understand income sources. And, um, but transfers is a big problem to solve. And, and we've solved it in regards to actually showing a landlord, this is how much money they make payroll. This is how much they make in total income payroll plus additional income sources. One of the things we all need to follow in this industry as property managers and landlords is fair housing guidelines. Have you talked to HUD about this or attorneys who are fair housing attorneys to make sure that what you're doing is considered legal within fair housing guidelines as a housing provider? Yeah. So that's, that's a really, really great question. So we absolutely, it is hundred percent legal. We've done our legal reviews and talking with all the right people. And, and the reason it is, is because essentially all you're doing, all we're doing is organizing and categorizing the digital version of their paper bank statement. Now, of course, the landlord can't use that information to discriminate on, and we don't show any, you know, information that, that would be considered on any of those grounds that are protected. So it's really just the same thing as someone giving you a paper bank statement and they can 
you know, redact what they want. But the problem, of course, when someone gives you a paper bank statement, you don't know it's true. And they may forget to redact something. We automatically remove transactions that are not relevant to the landlord. So we do, uh, basically, that's the first thing we do when we receive the data is we do, we, we review it. Our system reviews it to re- remove any transactions that are not relevant to providing our- Payments to doctors come to mind, right? Things that are kind yeah, of, all that kind of ordering stuff. on perhaps privacy infringement. 100%. Walk us through a scenario where I'm getting ready to apply for a property, kind of how it works, right? How that whole process runs, where do these people have to log in? Walk us through the steps. <laughs> no problem. There's two workflows in our system. And uh, so the first is what we call pre-screen plus a bank check. And what that workflow is, is when you've received an inquiry or an application through another source, through your property management software, through your website, and you've mm-hmm. received an application maybe it's just a, a basic inquiry name and email, you as a property manager or landlord, we provide you with a link um, that you use for your rental applications. You send it to the applicant. They click on it and it would have all the pre-screening questions you would like to ask. Could be 20 questions, could be two questions. Could be, you know, your pets, all the other standard questions. They first create an account. So they should provide their email and verify it. They answer the pre-screening questions. They're provided with the bank connection page where they see a list of all the banks in North America, or if they're in US, that's it just pre-filters to the US banks and a really easy search where they can find their bank or credit union, select the credit union or bank, put in their card and password. And uh, we have a little video on the right, about 50% of applicants watch, and it just explains in the process what it is, how it's secured, you know, the benefits of it. Once they hit complete to putting in the card and password, uh, we just asked them one last question, if they have any roommates or co-signers, so they can add those roommates or co-signers to the application and they hit complete and that's it. The landlord receives a notification within five minutes that the applicant's complete, the pre-screening questions, and then all the information in the bank check. So that's kind of the standard flow. The other is what we call just pre-screen then bank check. And that's for if you put your application on a website. So let's just say your property management company and you want people to fill out the application. So they are on your website, they click the link mm-hmm. and they do the pre-screening questions and that's it. And then you as a property manager can review the answers to the pre-screening questions to decide if you want to do a bank check. So that might be more of the traditional application questions like how much monthly income do you have? Do you have any pets? Say, okay, this looks like a person that would meet our qualifications, let's take it to the next stage. Absolutely. And that allows you to control your costs because we we don't charge a monthly fee or a setup. We only charge when a bank check is run. So we don't charge even for pre-screening questions. So you can say, okay, well, I've received 20 pre-screening applicants and uh, I'd like to go ahead with a bank check for four of them. And those four, they just get notified to do the bank check. They click the link, put in their card and password, and they're done. Cool. So who pays? Is the renter paying it when they log in or is the landlord or property manager paying it on the back end? Yeah. So the uh, currently it's a landlord pay model. And what happens is that the landlord is billed once the bank check is complete and they're provided with the report. So it's kind of in real time. And then they're provided with an invoice uh, and then a monthly um, a summary of how many bank checks they've run. Next month, actually, we're be launching our applicant pay model, which allows the applicant to pay for the cost, uh, which is $9.99 for the report. And the the report gets shared with the landlord, but also because the applicant pays, they retain access as well to the report, which they can share with other landlords as their financial resume. Okay, cool. Where are you guys located as a company and how long have you been at this? We're in Canada. So uh, the the great white North, as they would say. And uh, so we're just outside of Toronto. Our head offices are in a place called Belleville. Uh, so it's uh, right on the water. Very nice. This isn't our the first company This is that I've, that I've started. This is actually the second uh, company that I've started. The first was in the automotive space that, that has done quite well. And, um, you know, as a diversification uh, outside the automotive space, myself and our partners and investors were looking for different opportunities. And as you know, people who invest usually own real estate as well. So it as part of the conversations was, is there a technology we can create that can simplify the real estate industry? And, and we started to investigate. And when we saw that as part of our research, we said, well, wait a second, 
why isn't one of the first steps for an applicant applying to a rental property and you know, which is the largest monthly expense or they should be uh, you know hopefully uh, largest monthly expense is renting why wouldn't we do the same thing for landlords to connect with the bank so they can understand the person before they rent to them. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, really cool. Hey, so we were chatting before we got started here today. I'm very involved in the NARPM organization. And for those listening who don't know what NARPM is, it's the National Association of Residential Property Managers. Quite quite a mouthful, NARPM. Uh, I happen to be the president of the California State Chapter, or Cal NARPM. You have a special program for NARPM members. Yes, it's been so exciting to work work together. And we offer a first report purchase, we offer 40% off. So that's our coupon code NARPM40. Very cool. Craig, I warned you about this. One of the things I'm known for is telling brief stories, you know, like when I go meet a new client. So I'm going to ask you, you know, do you have a personal story you could share with us today? Sure. I mean, uh, I love stories. Stories, it's amazing. One story I'd like to share is about my grandfather. So very interesting guy, super interesting guy. So he is old school. So he had never finished his grade 10 because he didn't have the opportunity to do so and worked um, in, in where we are in the greater Toronto area. There's a, a General Motors plant. So right after grade, essentially after grade 10, he started working at the General Motors plant, saved up his money, you know, and him and, and my grandmother, you know, just everything, you know, you think of that generation they did to try to get ahead and finally saved up enough money. And what happened was, is he said, okay, I'm going to do something. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but we're going to give it a shot. So he sold. So basically my grandmother gave him his car, her car, and he sold it at auction to get two more cars and started a used car lot with my grandmother's car. And within two days, sold those two cars and then bought another four at auction and just tried to double as much as he could. And this was back in like the the late 50s, early 60s. Started that way. And where uh, where we're situated was part of that suburban sprawl. So it was farmland then, but over those like late fifties and the sixties start to see like big subdivisions. And he was able through this, you know, just dogged determination to get the general motors franchise in the greater Toronto area, uh, as a town called Whitby. So it's now population of a hundred thousand, but at that time, I think it was just about 10. So basically he was after the local auto dealerships for, for GM. That's right. So okay, yeah. he started with that and then grew it to the largest general motor franchise in Canada. And that in, 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 of course, you know, a lot happened in 08, you know, cause with general motors franchises, you had Pontiac, but he lost that. So you, he lost essentially 40% of his vehicles, even with that. He was able to grow and still maintain as one of the largest car dealers by volume in Canada after losing his main, essentially his main product, Pontiac, and doing it just through talking to, you know, like when so he, he, he has a way with people when they come onto the car lot, you know, he just has this way where you just can't not talk to him. Like he's just, it's, 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 it's an amazing thing to see. And um, so a lot of the entrepreneurship you know, that, that I've learned is, you know, from him and, and, and his approach to life. And he is now 86 and he started his latest dealership, a Hyundai dealership franchise just North of Whitby. So he's actually the oldest, I I believe he is the oldest person to ever in North America, start a car dealership at 86. Does he still go to the lot? Every day. (laughs) Every day. That is a really cool story. The greatest generation, as they say, right? Hey, this has been a great conversation. I love that story. And the episode is also full of some fantastic information. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I'd love to continue, but just in the interest of time, we got to wrap up today. So any last words or thoughts for our audience? And if someone wanted to get in touch with Rentify, how would they do that? Yeah. So you can go to trustrentify.com. It has all the information about, you can sign up, it explains the report, security, what you get, all of that. That's probably the best place to find us. If you're a landlord or property manager, it's take this opportunity to really think, do you want to be renting to someone where you know what's in their bank account? Or do you want to be renting to someone where you just know their credit score? And I can tell you, landlords, life just gets a little bit easier when you build in a bank check. There's just huge opportunity for landlords, big and small, big and small to 
to use this technology to make life easier. Well, that's really great input and information for our listeners. Awesome, Craig. Hey, thanks so much for coming on the show. This is going to be a great episode and I'm sure you'll get some questions coming your way and hopefully some NARPA members will take advantage of your offer. Well, as we wrap up today, I'd like to make another quick plug to our listeners to click on the subscribe button and also give us a like. You too, Craig. I expect a like and a subscribe. Also pay it forward with a positive review to help encourage more great guests like Craig to come on our show. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you for joining the show. Until next time, we will be in the field working hard for our clients to maximize their rental income and maintain top tenant relations. And we'll catch you next time.